Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Chad Jones. I'm Vice President Strategy and Product Management with Dynamic Ops. Today I'm going to walk you through the Dynamic Ops Intelligent Resource Management Capabilities. In today's data center, cost is a big issue. Making sure that you have the highest levels of efficiency and utilization across your hardware is a key imperative. Dynamic Ops has a unique approach to controlling resources, not only from the gateway into the system, but across the entire life cycle, all the way to reclaiming the resources. I've got a lot to show you today, so let's get into the demonstration. Dynamic Ops views intelligent resource management in three phases. First, in the provisioning phase, we make sure that the resource goes to the right piece of fabric based upon the business rules. We ensure its configurations are limited according to those same rules. And then we implement an approval process and leasing to ensure that we have full control of what those resources will be and how long they will exist. As the active life cycle of the machine continues on, we're able to control the configuration of that machine within those same policies. And then finally, at the end of the life of the machine, we can reclaim those resources and make sure that they can be used for other requests as well, really tightening up the efficient use and keeping the utilization very high on your infrastructure and therefore the cost down. So if we go into the interface and we log in and look at our enterprise admin interface, and I'll go ahead and click inside of here. The first thing we're gonna do is look at our reservations. Now, reservations are really a set of policies that take all of the fabric elements together and really dictate where things can be placed, what their quotas are, and really what the limitations are as far as CPU and RAM and disks. And really, it's the, the beginning foundation where we tie the service up into a blueprint and eventually to our business units. So when we look inside of reservations here, You'll see that I have all sorts of different reservation policies. We can see how much machines have allocated as far as percentage of CPU, their quota, memory, storage. And of course, if we dive into there, we get more information as well. It can have a very granular level of control. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to our virtual center one reservation and go ahead and say edit so we can look at this. Now, in Virtual Center 1, you'll notice that we have, first of all, the name Virtual Center 1, and then what our priority is for this, the memory that is allocated between the host to this particular reservation, and then we can also see all of the storage paths that are inside of uh, our fabric and can be allocated through this reservation. Here we have SAN 2. Now, you'll notice that throughout this whole system, we're able to add cost to the entire uh, elements that are underneath this particular reservation. So we have a storage cost inside of here. Um, again, memory, what we can allocate. We also have network uh, that we can allocate to this particular reservation. Again, really getting control on where something can actually be placed. Uh, to give you a use case for this, if you're in the banking community, you can't have investment banking resources sitting on retail banking fabric. It's a big regulatory no-no. So you gotta make sure that you have reservations to ensure that both of those cases stay in their proper boundaries. So now that we've seen what reservations can control in the fabric, let's go ahead and look at how we set up the service through blueprints. So I'll go to my provisioning group manager and then go in and select blueprints. Now, if I go into the dev virtual center reconfigure blueprint, that's what I actually associated with my fabric resources through my reservation, you'll see I have three tabs inside of here. So first of all, I've named my blueprint. I've said which group can access it, which reservation policy. This ties it back to the actual reservation. What my machine prefix is, so this is the naming prefix for the machine in this particular blueprint. And then we can actually put in very granular approval policies here so that we can make sure that either there's no approval policy if it's pretty open, or we can have a default approval policy where it just goes to the group administrator for approval, or we can have a custom approval policy where you can have any sort of hierarchy uh, 
in a very custom way, do your approvals. Maybe you have a cost threshold. Maybe you have machine quota thresholds. You need to draw from many systems in the approval system to see if that's really going to give you what you need. All of those things can be provided through this hierarchy of approvals. Uh, we then can say, what's the max number of machines per user that can be deployed? And what's the archive policy as well? Now, if I go into build information, you can see that this is a server and my basic profiles, but I can also put in minimum and maximum and approval thresholds as well. So I can put in a minimum of one CPU and a maximum of five. But you know what? If I'm gonna go over three CPUs, I'm gonna to have to get approval. Same thing with memory, storage, and then we can put leases in as well. Now, in a development environment, a lot of developers will be like, look, I'm a developer, I need a powerful machine, I'm gonna take as many resources as I can. So I'm gonna get eight CPUs and 16 gig. Well, that's kind of an expensive proposition. When in reality, they probably need a single core and two gigabytes of RAM. But they don't really have something to control that behavior. So through these appro approval policies, we're able to say, look, if you want, 8 gig and you know four CPUs, you can go ahead and get that, but you're going to have to talk to somebody about that and explain the cost. Well, a lot of times they look at that and go, oh, I can go ahead and live with the single CPU and the two gigabytes of RAM. So it actually modifies behavior right at the gate. Beyond that, leasing is important because a lot of times machines, they may be active for a little while, then they're forgotten, they're orphaned. And those continue to take resources that are very valuable and can be used for other requests. So we build in a leasing policy, you know, and again, we have an approval as well that if you go over maybe 30 days for a particular group, you can do that, but again, you're going to need approval for that. Again, very tight control of those resources being allocated at the provisioning time. Uh, beyond that, we can add additional cost on top of here as well. Uh, and then we have security rights that are particular to this blueprint on what you can do to this particular entity. You know, and again, we can ch check or uncheck these at any point inside of the lifecycle and approve that security. So now we're inside of our user self-service portal under the login name Chris. So if I go into the self-service and look at my machines, you can actually see all of the machines that are assigned to Chris and have been provisioned by him, including some of the ones inside of the current blueprints and reservation system we're talking about. Now, if I go into request machine, and I go in and actually look at Dev Virtual Center Reconfigure. That's the blueprint we actually used. I'm gonna go ahead and click on here. And you can see a lot of those policies uh, in action that we set inside of the blueprint. How many machines would you like? What's the lease duration? You know, it tells us between 30 and 90, but approval is required for something greater than 30. That's what we put into the system. Number of CPUs, the limitations, RAM, storage, reason for approval, all of these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take the defaults because I think that I'm gonna be able to do my job with that. And I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So now an email has been sent out uh, to do approvals. And then it's going to out, go out and automatically create that virtual machine on the system. So if we go to My Machines, you'll notice that Dev Tier 1 00004 is now in the creating machine state. So it's actually building the machine based upon the parameters that we built into the reservation and the blueprint, all within that business context. So now you see that we've finished the provisioning of the machine, and that's by the machine provision state that we have here. So now this machine's ready to go. All the software is needed that's put on to that system automatically. It's configured for the networks, and again, all within the business context of this particular business unit. But now, over the life cycle of the machine, you know, you may need to reconfigure that virtual machine and add more resources. Maybe I need more CPU. Maybe I need more RAM or disk space or I can actually shrink the disk space RAM or CPUs and give that back to the actual fabric so other people can use that. Again, very tight control of the resources. The administrator is able to run reports on the resource allocation of these machines and actually see what's being used. For example, they could run a report that says, show me all of the allocations of memory that are eight gig and higher, but yet only 50% or less are actually being used. Then you can send out an email and say, I'd like to reclaim three gigs RAM out of your system. Is that okay? They say, yes, great. It reclaims those three gigs, you know, gives it back to the fabric. They say no because they really need it. Well, they end up holding on to those resources. But a user can come in and do that as well. 
So if I come back into my uh, portal and I go into my machines, into my uh, dev tier 4 machine, and I go all the way down inside of my choices here to reconfigure machine, it'll bring up an interface, again, controlled by the same governance policies that we set in the blueprint. And we can actually turn around and edit memory, CPU, storage, change networks, uh, execution priority as well. But let's say we go in, we're just going to change memory. So I'm going to turn around and say, okay, I need one gigabyte of RAM instead of the 512 that I have allocated here. So I'll go ahead and change this to one gigabyte, and I'll say OK. Now what will happen is I have to shut down the VM because that's the only way that you can reallocate that memory. So right now it's going through an automatic process where it's changed the actual RAM allocation, it's shutting down the machine, and then it's going to bring back up the machine with the new RAM allocation. Just that simply. All controlled again through the business policy that was set up in the blueprint. Now, if the user tried to exceed the approval of any of those resources, it would send the same approval chain out. Whether it's a simple approval chain or very granular approval chain, does not matter. It's still controlled by the blueprint. All right, so now the reconfigure process is complete. If we go into our Dev Tier 1 4 machine and we go down and look at the reconfigure, uh, you can see now that this is at 1024 instead of the 512 it originally was. So it reallocated the RAM just that quickly. And now that machine is more powerful than ever to do whatever job it needs to do for the developer or whatever the target user is. So now, let's go ahead and look at how we reclaim these resources. So if we go back into the My Machines view for this user, uh, what you're gonna see here is all of the machines. And then on the right, there are the leasing uh, information on what the timeouts are for their expiration. So here we have some expirations around you know, April 9th, March, uh, those things. If we look back at our Dev Tier 1 4 machine, uh, you know, let's say that we're getting close to the lease, the end of the lease. Now, if we go in and actually look at some of our options here, you can actually extend the lease of the machine. You can actually expire the machine as well. Now, all of this can be done through email also. As you get close to the end of the machine's life through the expiration date, it will start sending emails warning you and saying, hey, you're at the end of the life of this machine. Now, based on the business policy, it can either just notify you and the machine goes away, or you could possibly extend the lease or expire it, or whatever the custom workflow is assigned to this blueprint. So inside of our demo, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's extend the lease on this machine and say, when would I like to extend this to? I'm going to go ahead and extend it another couple months. So now I'm going to enter in a reason for the request. My project is running longer than expected. Don't know if the manager will be pleased with that, but it's the real reason. We'll go ahead and say OK. And now it will go through the normal process to extend that lease, again, defined by the blueprint in the business unit. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in and say, another option is let's just go ahead and uh, expire the machine and go ahead and say, let's just end that right now. Now, if I'm going to expire it, it will actually take it down to a point where it follows the end of life process as defined by that blueprint. So it doesn't just turn it off and delete it. Uh, it could if that was the policy. But if you have a highly regulated environment like a trader's desktop, something like that, or financial development going on, you may not want to just destroy the machine. So what will happen is it will go through an archival process, let's say. But anyway, it really signals that that's the end of life for that particular machine as designated by the user or by the end of the lease. So at that point, once it's actually expired, it reclaims all of those resources that it used and puts them back into the resource pool for that particular reservation, and it can be used by new requests coming in. Again, keeping that utilization rate very high, keeping tight control of those resources, and continuing to drive down cost inside of the enterprise data center. As you can see, Dynamic Ops Intelligent Resource Management has a unique approach to managing the comprehensive life cycle of the machine and ensuring that your resources have the highest utilization, the greatest amount of efficiency, and all of this drives down cost. So thanks for joining us today. I'm Chad Jones, and we'll see you next time.